Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After we run you through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. Obviously, very sad news. Um, we lost two of the members of the 1972 team this year. So far this year is very bad. Uh, it's not a good year. Um, we lost Don Shula earlier this year. We lost another Dolphins legend, um, Jim Kick, who passes away at the age of 73. Very sad news. Obviously, our thoughts and prayers are to his family. Um, was a part of the most dominant run in Dolphins history. Three-time. They went to the Super Bowl, obviously, three years in a row. Won two of them. Was a part of the best duo slash trio in Dolphins history. Can't bring up the perfect backfield without his name. Uh, meant a lot to the franchise and its fans. And it's very, very, very sad that uh, we've lost two members of the 72 team, which obviously uh, the members of that team continued to dwindle over the years. It's very, very sad. Uh, and you can't be a Dolphins fan without knowing a lot about that team and about that trio as well. It's very, uh, very, obviously very important to the franchise and uh, very sad news. Um, so, you know, I wanted to get the sad news out of the way first. Sucks to talk about. Again, this year has not been so great so far. It's been pretty bad. Um, but let's get into some Dolphins news, and hopefully that cheers everybody up. And let's talk some Dolphins football. Um, so this first news story uh, is a pretty awesome uh, good news here. Uh, this comes from Pro Football Rumors. Xavier Howard will not face suspension. The Dolphins have... Uh, extensive resources devoted to the cornerback position, having added impact free agent Byron Jones and used a first-round pick on Noah Igbenogany. The team will be able to pair those two with the top hold, uh, with the with its top holdover corner from last season, Xavier Howard. Which is a weird way to state that, um, but yeah, I know it sounds like bad reading, but that's how it was written. I, I apologize, Xavier Howard who saw a domestic battery charge drop this offseason, will not be suspended. Um, obviously, that's great news. You know, we thought for a long time, and I think this helps with him not getting traded as well. I think, you know, a lot of people brought that up. We're like, oh, you know, maybe these allegations of the off-the-field issues, combined with the fact that he's had some injury issues in the past, maybe the Dolphins will look to move on from him. They just gave the dude an extension. He's one of the best players at his position in the NFL. They have an opportunity to pair him with another guy that's in that top five, in my opinion, which is not something you can normally do when you build an NFL team. And the fact that you can do that uh, on one of the most important positional groups on the, on the, in the game of football, you know, I just don't understand why um, you know, some of those rumors were happening. Now that you got Noah Benogany in there, also these guys won't miss a beat. They have the entire offseason, well, not entire offseason, just uh, you know, we don't know how the offseason is going to look, but hopefully they have a decent offseason together. They're going to have a preseason if we do get a preseason uh, they'll have that together, uh, and he's not going to miss a beat in terms of regular season games, and that obviously is a huge, 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 huge news for the start of the year, um, because we play a lot of the AFC East opponents in that first month of the season, so we need him there, and it's just great news that he's not going to miss two or three games, because those two, those first two and three games are going to be big, and to have our biggest assets uh, on the field, hopefully if everybody stays healthy, um, is, is a big deal, and just great news. Uh, I'm very happy about it. It's something I think us, us, us fans forgot about, that this was kind of hanging over the franchise. Um, but it's nice to know that it's not going to happen, and they're going to be together. And very excited to watch this defense. Um, it's the, To me, it's the most talented duo in the league. It's not the most accomplished, um, which I completely understand if you give it to the you know, the defense that's a little, you know, has the accolades and stuff of that nature. But in, in terms of talent, I don't think there's a better cover to corner bump and run duo in the National Football League right now. You're talking about Byron Jones, who I keep bringing this up, but held Michael Thomas to, I think, one or zero receptions. I can't remember. It was either zero or one, which is literally impossible with the amount of catches that guy has a game. And uh, Xavier Howard is obviously probably the best ball hawk secondary member in the National Football League, especially at the position he plays. You know, it's hard to get... 10 plus picks like he did uh or not 10 plus what, what do you have seven uh or close to 10 you know what i'm talking about like it's very difficult to do that at that position you know safety you know you might get an overthrow here and there if you're in zone you kind of get lucky sometimes off of a tip or a ricochet the cornerback position that's very unlikely that you get any of those 
Um, and especially if you're in a man defense, uh, it's even more difficult to do that because, you know, to me, it, it's great, a great talent and obviously you really hone your technique is to consistently get your head around it and be confident in yourself to pick a ball off. I mean, we've seen very, a lot of corners in the National Football League are very incapable of doing that and X is one of those rare guys that uh, can do that. And if you guys hear this, a fan in the background and dogs, I apologize, but there's really nothing I can do about that. Uh, Anyway, yeah, it's great news. Um, I'm very happy to hear it and very excited, like I said, to see this defense with Brian Flores, who obviously comes from a defensive background. It's going to be fun to watch, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, if we're being honest, it's going to be really fun to watch, and uh, it should be a great improvement from last year uh, for sure. So, yeah, let's move on to the next news story. And to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, we really don't have a news story. We have two things I want to bring up that's important if you're a Dolphins fan. Number one... Uh, if you look up on YouTube, Top 20 Miami Dolphins Moments of the Decade. Uh, it's by Heat of Miami Kevin. He made a really good video. It's the 20, obviously it's in the title, the 20 greatest moments of the decade. I completely agree. It's really well done too. It doesn't have bad music over it. It's not bad editing. They're not trying to edit the heck out of it. It literally is just the countdown. Uh, and it leaves you with the moment of the top 20, which those are my kind of videos. And I think he nailed the video. So go support that video. And I'm sure if you're a Dolphins fan, you want to go see the last 20, the, you know, the 20 biggest moments of the decade. Great video by the Heat of Miami Kevin. Um, I disagree with one placement on his list. Um, just spoiled a little bit. He had the win in Gillette Stadium from last year at like 15 or 16. I'm not going to spoil the rest of the list, but I would have... I would have put that in my top three. It's a quick video, by the way, too. It's only eight minutes. It's not going to take too much of your time. Uh, it's a really good one. Um, and if you love that 2016, 2016 team, it's really well represented in that video as well, as it should be. So if you guys want to go check that out, uh, you can. It's a really good video. Again, that's uh, Heat of Miami Kevin, the top 20 uh, moments of the uh, decade from the Miami Dolphins. Um, so there you go. Uh, and this next two story. Again, guys, there's not a lot of news to talk about. I think the top news story for the Dolphins this past week was uh, Tua Tagovailoa said something about like his celebrity crush. I can't remember who it was, but that's what everybody's talking about. I want to talk about something different. And it's not necessarily related to the Dolphins, but I think... Excuse me, I'm sorry. I think it should be. Um, and also, I forgot to upload the fan Q&A earlier uh, I completely forgot about it. I don't know how. Like, how did you forget? I have no idea. I, I completely skipped over it. So we're not gonna have a lot of questions. This is gonna be a very short episode. I apologize for that. But let's get into the Jamal Adams situation. Uh, Jamal Adams tweeted earlier today that uh, he has enjoyed playing with his safety mate Marcus May, and I think that's really alluding to something. Maybe that this deal is going to get done very soon. Uh, that he was he's going to be traded. I mean, the man listed eight teams that he would like to be traded to. He said to some fan, this is in a Twitter video or YouTube video, I don't know which one, uh, that he's trying to go to Dallas when while he was in Dallas. So I think it's inevitable that this is... And if you're the Jets, I, I have no idea why you would keep someone like that around. Um, if I was the GM of the Jets, I would just get what I can for him um, and move on because clearly he doesn't want to be here. Um, and we all know how Adam Gase and past relationships with players really ended badly and were not good relationships. I mean, I don't think you want that in your locker room. Um, so, I think for all of those reasons, he's going to be traded. Um, and I think, it, in my opinion, if you look at what the Dolphins have, um, in terms of draft capital, I think it's a no-brainer uh, trade. If I was the Dolphins GM, and I know maybe some people have some questions about his... Uh, I guess locker room etiquette or how he is in the locker room and stuff of that nature. I don't have any... I mean, first of all, I just feel like he's the missing piece in a puzzle. Uh, and he's an all-pro at his position. So, I, I definitely... And he's so young. He's still on his rookie contract. So... And I think he has two years left on his rookie contract, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a no-brainer trade for any NFL team right now. Um, and I feel like with, what, with the culture of building in the Dolphins locker room and... I mean, everybody in that locker room loves Brian Flores and you can't say that about Joe Philbin, Adam Gase, uh, or any of those guys. So, uh, maybe Tony Soprano, Soprano, uh, uh, Soprano, I can't, I can't, I can't remember his name right now. Now that I said Soprano, uh, I'm getting my, uh, names mixed up. But anyway, um, I feel like Brian is probably the best leader we've had and really just the best head coach all around. 
um, we've had in a long time here. So uh, I think for all of those reasons, I think he would make, you know, I don't think we'd have to worry about the off the field issues. Uh, that's the point I was making with, you know, how Brian's a great leader and everybody loves him. Um, and I think he's just the missing puzzle to the, you know, I think you heard on Undisputed, if you watch that show, um, with the whole Jamal Adams thing that, you know, Shannon Sharp was talking about how Jamal Adams is in a really all-around good safety. He's really, really good in the box, but he's not so great everywhere else. You know, his interceptions aren't that high, but he is a great he, you know, a lot of times, especially with Todd Bowles, because they did a lot of zero-man blitzes, and they left a lot of their players on an island, Jamal Adams was asked to do a lot of that. I mean, when Gronk was still in the league, they asked him to just, hey, man, follow Gronk the entire game. Um, he does that a lot, even in Greg Williams' system, which is, again, another heavy blitz system. He does a lot of those things very well. Um, so I think he's more than just a box safety, although he's probably the best box safety in the National Football League. He's the best blitzing safety I've seen in a long time. I mean, maybe since Troy Palomalu. I mean, he is really physical. He knocks over tight ends, guards. I mean, he is a very, very physical safety. And I think he's just the missing piece to this defense. So if the, I don't know, and I know the rumor is the, the Jets want a first and a third. I would do that in a heartbeat. Uh, we have the Texans. We have two first round picks this upcoming season. I think no, I mean, using a first round pick on an all pro safety isn't a bad thing. And he's been consistent throughout his entire career. I think this whole Jamal Adams hate thing is a way, way overblown. And I don't think a lot of people watch him play. But he's by far the best Jet. I think if you're a Dolphins fan and you watch Jets games, he's a problem. I mean, if you think about uh, some of the plays he's made just against us, I mean, a lot of those things. I mean, he had a sack strip fumble that I think we, uh, we actually recovered. But, uh, but he's made, you know, he stopped a lot of drives, made a lot of plays, and he's been a huge, like, trying to run against Jamal Adams, it might as well be, at, like, adding another, like, all-pro middle linebacker into the box. Like, I think a lot of the things that he brings to your defense um, uh, is special, and I, I really like his game, and he's, and again, if the Jets lose him, now they would be stupid to trade him to us, but I still think it would be a perfect trade for the Dolphins. Uh, for all the reasons I missed. The only thing the Dolphins' defense is missing is a true free safety. And I know he plays in the box a lot, but he also plays off the ball a lot too. And I think he can play free safety perfectly. Uh, I think he's a better version of Devin McCourty because he's a little bit more versatile. He's probably not as good as Devin is uh, one-on-one, but he's still a pretty good one-on-one player if, if you have to, uh, you know, depending on what matchup you want. I think he can still play man coverage at a high level. Definitely above it. He's definitely an above-average cover safety, that's for sure. Um, and obviously he can play man or zone. And he's a great, and you know, you guys, people forget, when Brian Flores was calling plays for um, New England on defense, he was very aggressive. He blitzed a lot, more than the New England Patriots usually do. And uh, he would be a great asset in that. You know, he's a great, great blitzing safety. Great, great. Like Again, like I said, one of the best I've seen in a long time. So this would be a perfect trade, and he really would be the missing piece to the puzzle, in my opinion. Um... I think he would be a great addition to the team. I do think he would be worth a first and a third. Uh, and I think he would put this defense over the top for sure. Uh, he's a big upgrade over the guys that they have uh, on the roster right now. And I think the whole locker room thing, all that other stuff, I think we're building a good culture here, and I think he will fit right in. Now, will the Jets be as dumb to call the Dolphins? Not only do they make themselves significantly worse, they lose their best player, but they're also trading it to a division rival. There's just no way they would do that. If they did do that, I mean, to be honest with you, we're the only ones that could easily make that trade without even really hesitating. If we were a real contender for that trade, if you think about some of the other teams in the league, we have two first-round picks, you know, so it's it's easier for us to, I think, make that deal. Plus, we have a ton of cap space next year. We can pay him. We can extend him. We're going in the right direction as an organization and as a team. Uh, so I, I don't think, uh, and how trippy would it be if we got if we got rid of Minka one year and then traded for Jamal Adams the next year? That would be crazy. Because we used to argue, like, who was, you know, you, those two would be compared a lot. So they definitely were going to be compared a lot for years to come if Minka would have stayed on the team. But again, for me, missing ingredient, I don't think we're going to have to worry about the locker room because of the culture we're building in Miami. And he's obviously a first-team All-Pro, very talented, and I think he fits the defense. In my opinion, I, know, I think some people disagree with that, but I think he's more than just a box safety. And I think if you watch the anytime we played the Jets, I think you can see that for sure. Um, so yeah, I and I, I just really like the fit. I really like the fit. And if I was Dolphins, if I was Chris Greer right now, I, I would be calling the Jets nonstop. Now again, they're not going to make the trade. It's a very unrealistic. Op, uh, th- if it happens though, I thought Byron Jones would be a Dolphin. So who knows? Maybe you know. I think this is more unlikely. 
Uh, but uh, it would be pretty awesome uh, if Jamal Adams was a dolphin. Man, we might not even make it to 20 minutes. We don't have a lot of material. If you guys hear yelling in the background, I don't know what else to do that. You know, people get loud and, you know, what it is. It is what it is. You gotta, you kind of got to truck through it. Plus, I'm late on the episode already, so I got to get this lab, this episode out. And uh, I, I hope you guys excuse the fact. This might not. This one literally might not make it to 20 minutes. I hope it does. Um, but that was it for the news, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, there's not, you know, there wasn't a lot to talk about um, uh, news-wise. Um... Uh, let me make sure on my uh, docket really quick. It'll take me like a little uh, a second here that I'm not missing anything, but I don't think I am. Um, let's see here. When I say docket, I don't really know what I mean by that. Um, yeah, there is no news, guys. I'm, I apologize. We, we really... Yeah, really, in terms of news news, there is no news news. Uh, so let's move on to the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. Uh, hopefully we make it at least 20 minutes. Uh, this first question comes from SM. He said, I thought Chad O'Shea went back to New England, but now that I see he's the Browns wide receiver coach, same position he held in New England, what does this mean? I don't know what that... I'm, I mean, they had their staff... I mean, they can't, you know, they can't account for what Chad is going to do because they're not going to fire... I don't think they would... I mean, we kind of did that with Chad O'Shea, but we don't really know what happened, and I'm not really going to go into that. But uh, you, you normally don't see teams fired positional group guys that they've... You know, I mean, they've had that guy for a year. I don't think Bill's going to be like, oh, you're gone now. We're hiring Chad. I think there's a little bit of respect factor there. Uh, so that I, I, the fact that Chad didn't go back to New England isn't surprising. Plus, the dudes get out a chance to, you know, coach probably the best receiver duo in the National Football League right now, which is Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham, and hopefully he can help. I'm sure he will help that situation. He's a really good coach. But I, I don't think it means anything, the fact that he didn't go back to New England. I don't think that has anything to do with him as a, as a coach. Uh, this next question comes from SM again. He says, easy question. Who will be the Miami Dolphins' second-string quarterback when the season starts? How many quarterbacks will be on the roster, on the 53-man roster? Especially, you know, there's been a lot of rumors that the rosters will be expanded due to the virus, and I actually kind of do believe that. Um, so, uh, I, I think it's going to be easier to carry three this year, and plus I don't think it would have been a problem. Um... I think the Dolphins would have carried three if it was a 50-man, 53-man roster anyway. Uh, so yeah, I think you're gonna now the the second string quarterback. Um, I would say probably. I mean, depending on how Tua is treated, which we really don't know yet. Um, I don't know. I really can't answer that question. It really depends on what happens with the first string quarterback. Um, in my opinion, if the Dolphins shut Tua down, then I think obviously it's gonna be Josh Rosen. But we'll see how they treat Tua. Uh, this next question comes from SM. He says there are two underrated, or excuse me, two undrafted wide receivers that had good college careers that Miami picked up. What wide receiver do you see the fans moving the fi- the fans the fins moving away from in 2020? Um, you know the guys that we have on the ro- I mean the the slot position, they have a lot of samey guys. Like for, especially for that slot guy, they bring different guy different um, attributes to that position, but they're very similar in what position they have to play. They're not really outside guys. They're really slot guys, and you, you, when you talk about the slot guys on the team, you think you think Alan Hearns, you think uh, Isaiah Ford, and obviously Albert Wilson, and those all of those guys are kind of jockey. And I guess you team Grant, but I, I you know I really don't think I, we'll see how that goes. But so I think it's gonna be a tough, tough, tough. And, and then, you know you think about Preston Williams too on the outside. Really, if they're gonna make their roster, it would be for for that slot position. Um, and uh, I don't I don't see that happening. I think I think you're gonna pretty much see the same receiver core this upcoming season, if I had to guess. This next question comes from Traps. He says, Hey, what's up, Skags? COVID has really thrown a wrench into our sports. I'm your... Excuse me, he says... Sorry, I gotta move this closer. He says, COVID has really thrown a wrench into our sports. I hate when people say COVID, by the way. It bothers me a little bit, but it is what it is. He says, I'm your... Uh, your pod is still going strong in this extremely slow off season." Do you do you happen to see Tua on the Mark? Did you happen to see Tua on the Mark Sanchez podcast? The clip I saw reveals that Tua is really sharp about reading coverage, being a leader, and going through progression swiftly. Do you think he'll be out Fitz and uh, even though Fitz, excuse me, I, I don't know why I butchered this, has all the. Uh, we're gonna redo this from the top. I apologize, guys, um, but I butchered this. Lewis says, "What's up, Skags? COVID has really thrown a wrench into our sports." 
Your pod is still going strong despite the really slow offseason. I really appreciate that. Thank you. He says, did you happen to see Tua on the Mark Sanchez podcast? The clip I saw reveals that Tua is really sharp about reading coverages and being a leader and going through progression swiftly. Do you think he'll beat out Fitz? Even though Fitz has all the sweat uh, equity built from last year, all the sweet equity built from last year. He said it says sweat. I don't know why. I think it says if I, listen, I can't read half the time anyway, so I'm pretty sure it says sweat, though. Uh, has all the like, equity he built from last year. So, do I think the fact... I think the Fitz factor is a real factor. Uh, and I know I didn't see him on the Mark Sanchez podcast. Um, but do I think, you know, the... Because Fitz had such a strong season last year that it... Um, I think it'll give him a head start, for sure, especially within the locker room, but... I mean, it really depending to me. I don't know how they're going to handle it. Are they going to wait and see? And I think they'll know by the preseason. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they'll have to go through preseason first. But where does the offensive line? How does it look? And I think to me, that's where you decide on who starts or not. That's my opinion. Now, if it's if the offensive line is right uh, and it's improved from last year, um, I don't think just because Fitz had a great year last year, any you know. Uh, I don't think that means he's going to start. I think they're going to let, especially if the offensive line is good to go, I think they're really going to let that play out. So, yeah. I really can't tell you who's... I Do Do I think... I don't think they're going to factor in Fitz's past performance into the decision. Now, if Tua is as good as a leader as we think he is, which, I mean, he seems to be, um, then the leadership thing, I mean... That could go either way, but we'll see what happens. But no, I haven't seen Mark Sanchez's thing. I'm going to watch that now, now that you brought it up. And two, I don't think just because Fitz had a great year last year, it's going to really come down. I don't think that's really going to have a huge effect other than the locker room, I guess. Uh, the next question comes from SM. He says, three I- uh, the next question comes from SM. He says, three INTs, three picks in four years at Texas. But Skaggs, break down how stupendous it will be if this number 70 pick, Brandon Jones, turns into a ball hawk along with the other weapons in the secondary. I think what I like about Brandon Jones the most when I watch him play is his versatility. I think he fits the scheme to a T. Now, whether he'll become anything or not is really up for debate. Uh, you just can, you know, it's very hard to project these kind of things. But um, you do like his versatility and you do like his fit in the system. So I think those are the things that I like about him the most. Um, you know, We'll see how things go. I think he, like I said, he, he fits the system well. You know, in that conference, they asked him to do a lot of different things. They didn't have to. They didn't ask him just to play free safety. You know, sometimes they had him manned up on receivers and stuff like that, which is some of the things we're going to ask our safeties to do. So I think again, the thing I like about Brandon Jones the most is his fit in the system. Um, this next question comes from Ethan. He says, "Hey Skags, what's your pot? Uh, pr- excuse me." He says, this question comes from Ethan. He says, hey, Skaggs, what is your proudest moment as a Dolphins fan? Thanks for the great show. My proudest moment as a Dolphins fan. Um, I think my proudest moment as a Dolphins fan is when Tannehill is winning six games in a row. This is recently. When he was re- winning six games in a row, We obviously, I think there was a little bit of pride in me that was like, yeah, told like, hey, he is a good player. And I think we know that now with the whole Tennessee thing. Uh, but, you know, everybody hated on Tannehill for a long time, and it was really awesome to see him do that and, and, and lead us to a playoff berth. So I think that, in recent memory, it was probably the proudest moment. Um, and plus, the national media still ignored us, but they could kind of couldn't ignore us because we were, you know, we won six games in a row, you know. Very, you know, we went a month without losing, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, this next question comes from Ethan. He says, hey, Skaggs. Uh, sorry, that's my dog. He has nightmares. Uh, he says, uh, this comes from Ethan. He says, hey, Skaggs, it seems like every year we pull off a win against a team the media says we have no chance against. Uh, what is the one game on our schedule you see us possibly pulling a major upset in this year? This year, I believe it's the game against the 49ers. I would say the game against the Chiefs because they have to come to Miami and we always play. And historically, we, we have a really good home record. So um, I would say that game. If you look at most of our upsets, in our, all of our big ones in Dolphins history are always at home in terms of upsets. Um, so I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs when they have to come to Miami. I think we could definitely... I think our secondary is talented enough to, to hang with those guys, and I could see us winning that game. 
Um, so yeah, if I had to pick one upset, that's, that's what it would be. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I know, man. 20 minutes, it doesn't really feel that, that great. Uh, it sucks that, you know, it. I really messed up because I, I forgot to upload the fan Q&A. And this, this obviously would be, I think, a little bit longer than it was. Maybe we would hit half an hour. We're almost in half an hour now. So, yeah, we definitely would have. But, um, you know, that's everything that I could muster. I apologize. And, you know, I, was, I know it was a short episode, but hopefully it was a good one. Uh, and I'm Skyx83. And I, hopefully we get more news and stuff to talk about next week. And I'll see you guys in the next one.